Okay. <laughs> All right. Welcome back. Your name is Sanko and hashtag is Thursday Vibes. Still hashtag Y in the morning and our Y254 channel on the gram and everywhere else on social media. We are verified with a blue check. But personally, you can check me out at a for 101. Today, this segment of the day is all about sport and tech, and we're going to talk about uh, software development. By the way, what do you that space and professionally do you have to go to school? Is it something you can study right now? Not there's like you know, short crash courses online as well. And joining us live in studio is a powerful gentleman, Anajita Talmon. Uh, I don't want to butcher the other name, so he's, he's, gonna, he's gonna introduce himself fully. But first of all, good morning. Good morning. Welcome, uh, introduce yourself briefly and then we can start off. All right, so my name is Talmon Mokesi. I'm the CEO for Yada School of Tech. I'm sure we'll get into that at some point. Okay. Yes, I'm a born again Christian. I love Jesus and I love being in this tech space. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, um, software, you're a professional, you're a software, so software who? Developer? Uh, let's say software engineer. A software engineer. Yeah. So if you don't mind, tell us what it takes to be a software engineer. Do you go to school to study for it? Is it something that me too, I can just pick up and read about it and become an engineer? Like, what are the dynamics of that journey? Okay. The dynamics are quite simple nowadays. As long as you understand the journey, you understand what you need to do to get to where you want. Okay. You can start by going to school. It's advisable if that's you are decided. But sometimes, you know, as Kenyans, we start off school, you are doing another course. By the time you realized your interest was in tech, a lot has happened. So I have friends who even were doing different courses, but they ended up on this journey. Okay. So it depends on okay. where you start. Mm -hmm. But if it's someone who's not started yet, I would just advise just go straight out and aim to do computer science. It will make your work easier. Right. If not, you can still make it in this industry. You right. just need to find proper guidance because right. sometimes if you go and you're self-taught, you won't be able to get as much as you want done in the time you want done because there's okay. so much material, you won't mm -hmm. know which one to choose from which. But if right. you find the proper channels of guidance, and nowadays there are many All right. out there. Yeah. All right, good. Uh, for you professionally, like did you, from high school, you always wanted to be a software engineer. Mm. Um, Amma, how did it like happen for you? It happened in a funny way mm -hmm. because I had never purposed to be a software engineer. I remember growing up when I was asked, I always wanted to be an aeronautical engineer. Mm -hmm. Even before I knew what that was, that's what I always wanted to do. Is the dream dead? <laughs> I'm still yet to come. The dream died. <laughs> because you became a software engineer? Yes. Okay. Yes, but that was not even in my plans. All right. I just finished school. And I was yeah. like, now what do you want to do? I wasn't, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew what I didn't want to do. So I personally chose. What, what, what is it you didn't want to do? <laughs> I didn't want to do Bachelor of Commerce. Because uh -huh. I've seen people do it, do accounting and mathematics. And I was like, I didn't want mathematics at that point. Right. So I don't know who lied to me that uh -huh. get into computer science, you won't do mathematics. Right. So I went into computer science thinking I'll only be dealing with computers, opening them, doing this, doing that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even so much into coding. Okay. But I went and found all the mathematics I was running away from. Right. It was waiting for Again, me. Again, waiting for you there. Yes. Now also take us through like, what are some of the facets in software engineering? Because I know there's programming, system developments, and so many others. Please take us through some of the, like a couple of like three. Okay. So let's even put it this way. You can be either a software developer or a software engineer. Right. Yes, and there are, there's a subtle difference in that. Okay. In that, if you're a software developer, you're only concerned about delivering the application. Mm -hmm. I just come, make the application, deliver it to you. Right. Now, a software engineer is concerned about everything. Right. About scaling the software, mm -hmm. about maintaining the code, about it being efficient, right. about using the right systems. A software engineer is concerned from the get-go. Right, even developing it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, even developing. Mm -hmm. But they, they see the bigger picture okay. yeah, as opposed to just going out and you want this done, I just go get it done. Then later you want to scale and we tell you, no, we have to start from scratch. Right. It is the work of a software engineer to look at.
Okay, coding. You see the computer. Right. Yeah. Uh, if you are to do will be centered on what you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. You might be you want to venture into a new space, you want to So it depends. People, they don't know what they want until they see it. So uh, you'll find a client telling you, I just want a simple app like Uber, just to right. come and do something like that, then finish. Right. And you see Uber is not a simple app in the way you know it. Right. So for you, knowing something as simple, it means someone has done a lot of work to okay. make it simple for you. OK. Yeah. Uh, talk about back end and front end, uh, also softwares and also programs. Like, right? how mm -hmm. do you now get to that space where you're able to do what is behind here, mm -hmm. and then the other person feeds on it? Okay, now when you start learning, let's say coding, you're going to be told now there is back end and there is front end. Back end basically is what drives the functionality. So you need uh, you go to a site, you need to log in to be able to see some certain resources. I create a backend for you, meaning I give you access and I do all the operations there. So oh. what you see in terms of where I can key in things or do things like that, that's the front end. Right. Where just appearance. Yeah. It shows you the user. It's like user interface. So yes. I'm coming for a finished product. Yes. My work is just using, in fact, seduly core data. You're like mm. the server controlling. Everything. Yes. Yes. Interesting. Uh -huh. Yes. It's like I'm behind the scenes right. doing things. Then you, your work is to just go and say, I want this resource, or oh, right. you want this resource, I give you. So now okay. it's knowing the relation between the two. Right. That's why in a software developing or software engineering journey, you can choose to either be backend right. or, or frontend, front or you can choose to do both, which is called now being a full stack. You're both? Yes. Okay. I'm both. All right. Many times in our space, you'll find that you'll get into a company and you're doing some work as a backend, but the resources are not there. Right. So you'll be told, now you have to finish your work. Right. But there are people who have specialized. They can create the best visual things out there. So you'll find even a full stack developer is usually either front end heavy or back end heavy. Right. It depends. Right. Yes. Also now, now for like user and uh, user. to ourselves from and bugs and what not. And but what I want So we'll come as a have an error. I did error where I was supposed to send this podcast to a storage space and mm -hmm. I didn't I misspelled your storage space. 